certainly to be scared has been part of the human nature since its very beginnings. What Alien says about us now are those fears that we have, which may be those fears that show up when we're dreaming, the nightmares. I think he took a lot of techniques from Alfred Hitchcock in the sense that you don't really see everything. The imagination is used, and I think that's what made it so terrifying. I think once you're making a movie, you better keep that pressure on all the way through, on anything, actually. But God knows on a thriller, or God knows it's a marathon of tension.
telephone me from Paris. Was it Paris, France? Or Paris, Texas? No, Paris, France. He had made an art film called El Topo, which was very well received. And this man over this transatlantic phone line claimed that he had the backing and the rights to make a feature film of Dune. And he loved Dan's work that he did on designing the special effects for Dark Star. And he knew he had to do it at a budget with some creative people. So he hired Dan to work on it, help him with the storyline and also with the special effects. And Dan went off within a few weeks. He went off to Paris and France and places and was working on the Dune project there for six months. And I wasn't the only person there. He had gone to England and he had plucked up a an artist who did covers for science fiction books named Christopher Foss. And for the first time, I saw somebody whose stuff I liked as much as Ron Cobb's stuff. He had another artist he wanted me to meet. He had seen this guy's work in a, a show that was in Paris at the time. Took me over to, to one of the really fancy hotels in Paris, not the one I was staying in, where this artist named um, Hans Rudy Giger was staying while his show was on display in Paris. Giger brings out this little tin foil. He said, would you like some opium? I said, why do you take that? He said, I am afraid of my vision. <laughs> story of that was Dan of course working on the Jodorowsky Dune in Paris for uh, a year or two and it all collapsed and he went you know he went home uh, with no money and whatever it is and slept on Ron Schusset's couch and I was in desperation and the only thing I could think to do I had to sell a script so he said now light up the board Ron I've got this first act and you like it and he says I know I know you have a good mind from these just weeks and weeks I've worked with you before I left and, 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 and what I saw you did on Total Recall, which you did the short story, uh, as far as you got it. I know you can make the breakthrough for me. Well, Star Beast is one of those titles that you, you know, you, you think of and then you, you know, you throw them away. I was running through titles and they all stank. I didn't like any of them. One morning at three o'clock, Ronnie's apartment, I'm typing away, writing dialogue, and the characters are saying the alien this and the alien that, and suddenly that word alien just sort of came up out of the typewriter at me. I said, alien, it's a noun and it's an adjective. I said, yes, that's it, I have the title. It's simple, it's one word, and no one's ever used it, and it, and, and it never changed from that moment on. No one ever tried, the title stuck, and that was amazing to us, even that, just that aspect of it. I went to storage, got my typewriter out, took it over to Ronnie Shusset's living room and wrote it up. Over the days and nights of the next three months, Ron keeping me alive by feeding me hot dogs. Dan said, somehow the monster has to get on board the ship in a way that'll amaze everybody. And so I woke up in the middle of the night and I said, Dan, I have an idea. And he said, what? And I said, the monster screws one of the people. He says, what? What are you talking about? I said, he jumps in his face, plants a tube down him, inserts his seat in him, and later it comes bursting out of his stomach. And Dan goes, oh, my God, that's the most amazing thing I've ever heard. Nobody's ever seen anything like that. And we just sat up all night, and we wrote. And in three weeks, we had what would, I would say, which is 85% of the plot, the structure. We didn't write the screenplay right there, of what you saw it became alien, 85%. And whether they drew from other movies, they probably did, like everybody, they drew consciously or self-consciously from things like the Terror from Beyond Space, but they actually, the ingredient of this, this thing being incubated in a human being made the whole damn thing stand out. Ronnie wanted to be on board once I had written the thing. He saw it as a, uh, you know, a viable thing he wanted to be involved with, so we, uh, we made ourselves a little deal. He would be on board as a producer, and we started trotting it around and showing it to various, you know, producing entities, and 
We got pretty close to deals in a couple of time, but uh, a couple of times, but they fell through well essentially because the people on the other end were um, demanding too much. You know, they were trying to screw us. And so we went to Roger Corman's company, uh, but then I think we were dealing with Bob Remy, who later became head of Universal. Corman's out of town, and he said yes. So right, that looks like a pretty amazing success story. He, he loved that Dan's movie was good, even though it didn't make money. He knew that I co-wrote this with Dan, though I'd never made any movie in my life because I took my name off the other, and we were going to make a deal, but we didn't get to signing the papers, or Alien would have been made as a low-budget Corman movie. A friend of ours named Mark Haggard ended up with a copy of it in his hands. He used to be an independent writer-director. Mark said, can I read this great script there? I'll talk about you having Dan said, sure. So, you know, we gave him the script, and we, and he, you know, he just said, let's just wait a few days, and then we'll... We'll close our deal with Corman. Well, he calls us, of course, the same night. He says, it's great. It's live, but I can get the money. I can get the money immediately. So we looked at each other, and, he, and we said, okay, well, look, we can't wait. We don't want to blow the deal with Corman. Uh, it's got to be a limited time. He said, two weeks. Give me two weeks. Mark Haggard knew Walter Hill, a director of tough guy movies. Gave it to Walter Hill. Walter Hill showed it to his partner, David Geiler, and then they showed it to their third partner, Gordon Carroll. The three of them had just formed a new production company called Brandywine Films. We had offices at, at the then Goldwyn Studios, now Warner Hollywood. And Walter's office was on the first floor, ground floor. And after lunch one day, he was sitting in his chair ruminating uh, with the window open. And uh, a friend of his uh, was walking down the, the alleyway. And he stopped and said, Walter. This guy handed him the script through the window. And, uh, and uh, he read it. And he, he uh, said, well, I'm maybe out of my mind. He said, I think this. He says, but uh, I mean, the script is terrible, but it has one great scene in it. And read it and tell me what you think. I read it, and I thought it was absolutely terrible. And, <laughs> and I called him up, and I said, what are you? You are nuts. This is crazy. Would you come to the big scene? I said, yeah, you think he jumps out and it's on his face. He said, that's not it. I said, look, I'm already on page 90. I said, you know, he said, keep reading. And I came to the chest burster and I called him back and said, well, I see what you mean. <laughs> they brought it to me. I thought it was interesting. A nice horror picture. It's outer space. I mean, what could sound better? And, uh, They then completely rewrote the script from top to bottom. What I didn't understand when we made the deal with uh, Brandywine, Geiler and Hill, was that Geiler and Hill wanted more than to produce this film. They, uh, I didn't figure this out until, in fact, after principal photography. But they targeted my script since they decided they wanted all the credit for the screenplay, and they didn't want me to have any. Right from the beginning, David and Walter took a, uh, did several drafts. And, uh, and it was the whole character of the film, uh, not the spine of it in terms of story, even though that was changed quite a bit. But the whole character of the film changed when Walter and David took it over. As Walter himself said in one of his speeches he gave us during pre-production, he said, he said, the greatest thing I have to bring to this project is I don't know anything about science fiction and I don't like it. And that was certainly reflected in the various drafts that they did. They took several cracks at drafts and they, from all consensuses, they were getting worse, not better, because that wasn't their forte. They did recognize it was great, but they weren't good at making it better or, in fact, at not making it even worse. To agree, I'm going to modify that with one exception. They made a huge contribution. But in the many drafts they did, most people felt it was losing. It's, but that happens sometimes because you take a shot, and then you sometimes come back to what attracted you in the first place. And they did radically. They did eight different drafts. For some reason, I couldn't figure out. Walter Hill immediately started doing rewrites of my script. I remember walking into Gordon Carroll's office and seeing a script on the desk and lifting up the page, and it said, Alien by Walter Hill. Gordon walks in. I said, Gordon, what's this? Gordon looked very embarrassed. He said, oh, you're not supposed to see that. But they contributed one thing, which is one of the best things in the movie, and I will eternally be thankful to them, not only for starting the ball for financing, but to contributing this to the movie. What they invented was the robot that was not in the movie, where the robot's 
Ash is a robot and his head comes off. That whole idea and scenario was theirs. We rewrote it top to bottom. I mean, all of the dialogue, all the characters, the whole sense of truck drivers in space, the whole um, you know, plot with the, with the robot, the whole, with Ian Holm, with all the rest of that stuff. That's, that's all in the new script. The only thing I could see he was doing was just stirring around the elements. First thing he did was change the names of all of the characters. One early discussion, Walter walks into the offices here at 20th Century Fox, and she said, he said, I hate all those names in your script. He hates all the names. I mean, how do you hate a name? Oh, I hate all those names. So he changed them all. Of course, he didn't hate them at all. But he had the naive idea that if he changed all of the characters' names, this would, would count somehow as being a substantial rewrite of the material. With a story that's as often told as this kind of story is, you have to do it in a special way in order for it to be special. I mean, that was, was our argument with, you know, about the movie in general with, with Fox all the time, and I think they agreed, which was that you had to treat this kind of B-monster movie as though it were an A movie. That script did not excite Fox enough for them to say, we want to go ahead and we want to make it. It must be remembered that this was pre-Star Wars. And uh, we were confident, although we had other places we could set the film up, we were confident that Fox would ultimately, uh, with another rewrite and whatever, would ultimately would do it. We certainly hope so. And uh, when Star Wars came out and was the next extraordinary hit that it was, then suddenly science fiction became the hot genre. I don't know that there was consensus one way or the other about science fiction. I mean, since I was the responsible party for making Star Wars, and it was such a hit, concerns about science fiction went away very quickly. They wanted to follow through on Star Wars, and they wanted to follow through fast. And the only spaceship script they had sitting on their desk was Alien. So they green-lighted it, wham. 